For those of you that don't know me, my name is Paul Wilson. Uh, as with most of the people that come to present to you guys, there's always an interesting backstory. Uh, mine's pretty simple. And who I am, first and foremost, I am the husband to my lovely wife, Lindsay, who puts up a lot uh, with me. If uh, any of you are entrepreneurs, uh, make sure you kiss your spouse doubly more than those that are not, because there's a lot of growing through it, and my wife is amazing. I'm also the father of five beautiful children, the oldest being Chloe, then Lydia, who is, I'm sorry, Chloe is eight, Lydia is six, Samuel is four, Eva is two, and Grace, who is asleep back there, is eight months. But through it all and weaved uh, into the very core of me is I am a believer of Jesus Christ. I am a believer of the restored gospel of Jesus Christ. I know that it is true. And I know that many of you, if you haven't, you will. Uh, times will come where you will doubt the happiness and the peace that you may have felt with the gospel. And I hope uh, for some of you that you can think back on this moment of when I testify to you that what this university is built upon, what the church is built upon, uh, the truth behind it is 100%. And I know that from having felt the hand of the Lord. And what is most important, and it we, comes into my entrepreneurship, is seeking after truth, regardless of what that is. You know, I tell people all the time that truth is truth. It doesn't matter what it is. What's important is that we find it and we live it. Uh, I am a teacher here on campus. I'm in the Entrepreneurship Center. I've been here two months, uh, the second time. I was a volunteer. My wife and I were volunteers uh, from 2013 to 2015. That was supposed to be temporary, but you guys ruined us. Uh, after we left, I, I realized how hollow it was without teaching. So when a faculty position opened up, I applied, and that's what brought us here today. I have, as far as it goes with uh, education, I have my master's in information technology from Carnegie Mellon over in Pittsburgh, and have a deep love for technology. Um, my um, career is not actually one of academia, though I have a deep appreciation for academia. Uh, it is of digital marketing. And those of you uh, that have taken classes from me or are taking classes or will take classes, you'll see that my approach to entrepreneurism uh, is with that lens. Everything's digital. And uh, I think what is important as we look at on our own paths, regardless of what that is, whether it's entrepreneurship or in other things, recognizing there are many paths to get where we want to go. Uh, one of the biggest mistakes I think entrepreneurs make is once they find success, they feel that is the only way to get that success. And so when people come and ask for advice, um, they say this is the only way. And I've been proven many times, I've been proven wrong many times when I said that's a horrible idea. I had a business partner who I told him not to do the business and he didn't listen to me and he went on to sell it for seven million dollars. I'm glad he didn't listen to me. So. With that understanding, I want to approach today's presentation a little bit differently. So I've been to uh, all of the, these lectures uh, to date except for one this semester. I take uh, my beautiful girls over here and we listen to the entrepreneurs. Uh, when I was here before I went to them, when I went to BYU in Provo, I didn't miss them. And there's a general recipe of what the entrepreneur shares. First is, yeah, let's go to the next slide. They share their failures. They're like, ah, oh, it was so hard, guys. I was miserable, I was down and out. I had these struggles. Ah, oh, 
I can't tell you I almost gave up. Then they go into their successes. And they're like, we did this, and we did this, and this took off, and we sold that, and we were billionaires, and own our own island just around the corner from Oahu. And then they leave with you wisdom. They say, if you do this and this and this, this will happen. Or they'll leave their takeaways, saying, this is what I gained. Hopefully, you will get something out of it as well. Uh, today, I'm not going to quite do that. I'm actually even deviating from what I'm about to do here. First is I'm going to make a promise to you. And that promise is when you leave this room, uh, you are going to have three strategies on how to make money right now. I think it's great that you can come and and I can come and impart my wisdom to you on my journey through entrepreneurship, but I think it is even more important that you take something away from this. And uh, hold on, I gotta grab something real quick. So this presentation, you guys got the URL at the very beginning. Those of you that looked at the slide count, you're like, wow. We've got 30 minutes, and he's going to cover 100 slides. So my first gift to you is already fulfilled. If you have that URL, you're going to go through that whole PowerPoint presentation. I leave three things where you can make money right away. And I'll just tell you what they are. But in the presentation, I actually give you a way to do it. The first one is what you saw with Enactus. They got up here. They talked. They did their presentation. You guys are at a unique point in your life where you are students and there are competitions everywhere for you to be a part of. We have the Enactus one that you saw. We also have great ideas that you guys, for the most part, have heard about that's going on right now. We're giving away $20,000. The competitions is the quickest way for you guys to make money. In my presentation, uh, it gives you three things that you can do that without fail, if you don't take first, you will definitely place. So what took me on my course in the entrepreneurism is that I had won uh, the business plan competition with Provo and then went on to the state of Utah and we won it there. I was gonna go into politics and I was supposed to run for president last year. Should have done that. That would have been an easy race. Um, but Instead, I got a taste of entrepreneurism through the competitions. Now, we have the competitions here with the Willis Center, but there are hundreds of competitions that you can be a part of. I'm going to tell you one. The one is called uh, the Holt Prize, H-U-L-T. It is only for university students. If you win first place, they do this every single year, you get $1 million. That's absolutely crazy. You should all be doing that. So if you go through this presentation, you will uh, have the URL that will tell you more about it. The second thing that is in this presentation it, that you can make money on right away is crowdfunding. And crowdfunding, Kickstarter, Indiegogo, those that are here with my social entrepreneur class are very familiar with it. You can do that today. You can make money on that uh, in a month once you're done with it. And then the final thing that the presentation hits on and uh, makes it so that you can uh, not just do uh, one thing or another is what is called personalized on demand, print on demand. And I, I've played with this a lot. I've launched a company around this. and. You could, right now while I'm talking, put together something quickly and design something and I actually give you tutorials on how to create a design in five minutes and that is not an exaggeration. And put it on a shirt, put it on a mug, put it on towels, socks, it doesn't matter. The, the personalized print on demand uh, industry that's going on has just exploded. And so those three things, are what's in my presentation. And that's my second gift to you, and that is I'm not going to give you that presentation. I strongly recommend that you get the URL, go through it, uh, and empower yourself on how to make money. What I 
decided that I wanted to veer. I, I spent a lot of time actually on that presentation because I wanted to give you guys something that uh, you could use in your own life. But I recognized when I completed it that it was missing something that's even more important. And that's what I'm going to discuss and that's where I'm going to stop with the presentation uh, with up here. And I'm going to veer and you know, bear with me as I go through what I feel is even more important. And that is my approach to entrepreneurism. Historically, entrepreneurship uh, was, OK, I need to make money. I need to make money. Uh, oftentimes, when people come and talk to me, they're like, I need to make money yesterday. And so what sort of product can I do? What, how can I put this together and make money right away? Uh, and I feel, for me, it's backwards. Uh, people focus too much on the money and not enough on the passion. So I'm going to give you my equation on how I approach entrepreneurship through four of the best partners, business partners I've ever had. So I've created 30, I've either created, uh, been a partner, or been on a board of, well, probably now 40 plus companies. And there are four partners that I've had in my time doing that um, that really showcase how um, I feel, for me, entrepreneurship should be done. And the first partner I want to tell you about, and if you have a piece of paper, I'd like you to pull it out. If not, I'd like you to type this in. Um, the first partner is Janet. And I, I want you to put that down because we're going to do an activity here in a minute. Let me tell you about Janet Thaler. Janet and I met in 2005. And she was a secretary for um, a paper goods company. And they had brought me in to do digital marketing. And I said, Janet, you've got to check out digital marketing. This is amazing. And her and I went in on an ebook. Uh, it was like 100 bucks. We both put in $50. And then I left and didn't see Janet for two years. The next time I saw Janet, Janet was and is a very well established uh, digital marketer and entrepreneur. And what is amazing about Janet is her passion in anything that she does. And that's the first ingredient. And in fact, I'm going to write up the equation that I have with how I see what there it is. Nope. How I approach entrepreneurship. Maybe. It gave me, oh, there it is. So the first part of the equation is passion. And that's one thing I've learned with Janet. Janet's done, uh, imagine that says passion, because that marker is dead. Uh, Janet's done quite a bit. And those of you that have come in to me, uh, if you ever need someone to represent you with the Utah market with particularly uh, mom bloggers, she is their leader. And you talk to Janet for two minutes, and you know that she loves it. And she just started this uh, mattress uh, business. And I've never met someone more passionate about mattresses. Like, she learns everything about it. And today, I want to just emphasize the importance of being a passionpreneur. And we, a passionpreneur really does first start with where they love. A lot of entrepreneurs come, and I was talking to Dr. Earl where he's like, you need to know if there's a market. You need to make sure that people are willing to pay you money. And I said, I disagree with all that. You can go in and not have this huge market and be able to launch uh, your passion. And yes, there may not be anyone there, but if you follow the next few partners that I'm going to share with you, that will come. So the second partner, Janet's the first. Janet is, represents the passion. Instead of focusing on the money, instead of focusing on, oh, I got to create the next widget, Janet and myself, we focus on what we love, what really wakes us up in the morning and say, wow, I want to go do that. The second partner, he's my partner right now. His name is Chad Winks. And Actually, one thing that, before I go to Chad, 
one thing I wanted to share with Janet. Janet taught me that passion without heart is hypocrisy. And I've learned that the hard way. I've done things, oh, thanks. I've done things for the money. And I've made money off of things that were just money. And my classes have heard this war story where things went bad. And we spent a year trying to get this company that was making us a lot of money uh, back to where it was supposed to be. And at the end of the year, we just didn't care anymore. It was not a passion. It was not a love. I talked to that partner uh, last week about that same business. We were closing down things and uh, selling off stuff. And we asked each other, do we want to keep this? Do we want to try to build this back up? Because there is money there. And both of us are like, nah, no, nope, that's not a love. And so with Janet, passion without heart is hypocrisy. Chad, he is an artist and one of the most gifted designers I've ever met. He and I currently are working on an ad network uh, and for mobile uh, apps. He and I love to create and uh, build. And Chad, he, with his art, uh, has taught me the importance of content. More importantly, voice. And Chad taught me that passion uh, without voice is just a dream. Like if you don't have a way to articulate what you're trying to do, you're never going to get anywhere with it. And through his art and through what he does, uh, he's able to help people see his world. And uh, if you ever want to uh, see something that's absolutely amazing, go to Facebook, type in Chad Wink's art, and look at his Joseph Smith painting. And there's a video there. It's 30 seconds long, won't take you uh, long to do it uh, and look at it. But you will look at that video and you will recognize that one, he definitely has heart in what he does. And two, you get what he's trying to do. He has that voice. So uh, in my 383 class, uh, we do a lot of blogging. And that's kind of where I'm hitting at with the voice. Where, how do you get your passion across? Now, blogging is not the end-all, be-all. Um, I have a student, and I don't see her here, but I, I won't embarrass her, um, who uh, vlogs, so does video um, logs every, well, every, so, every few times a week. And she has about 15,000 subscribers on her channel. So if you're not a good writer, take your voice to video. If you're not good at, or you don't like doing video and you don't like writing, you can do what my business partner Chad does and take it to image. Find a way to communicate. I don't care how you communicate. What I love, who knows what uh, Titch is? Titch. Who here plays video games? Okay. Twitch. Twitch, not Titch, I'm sorry. Uh, Running not on a ton of sleep. Tell us about what Twitch is. So Twitch is a, is a live streaming website where you can go to a subject you're interested in. You'll get a big long list of the most popular live streams for that. Most of video games, so if you love uh, League of Legends or Dota, you can go find uh, dozens of people playing that game right now. And they'll be talking and videoing themselves while they play. They'll be chatting with the people who are watching them. And uh, they usually make it pretty entertaining. Yeah, what I love about Twitch is that you guys hear all the time, stop wasting your time with video games. You are wasting your time with video games. There are people on Twitch that are making millions of dollars playing video games. If you can find a voice for what you love, you can find a path on how to monetize that. And that goes to and actually, I want to pause here. So I've shared two partners with you. First, I shared Janet. And Janet is the passion in this equation. And I shared with you Chad. And Chad is the voice of this equation. I want you to turn to your neighbor. 
you've got two minutes here to do this. I want you to talk about what you're passionate about. I don't care what you want to make money on. I, want, I care about what you love to do. Tell your partner what you love to do, and then tell your partner how you communicate. What's the easiest way for you to communicate? Go. Okay, tell me, just share with me some of your Janets. Share with me some of your Janets. I'm passionate about, about the gospel, or teaching the gospel. That's one way that I used to, uh, I love to teach, so that's one way that I use my voice and share my passion. Awesome, so he said he's passionate about the gospel. He loves to teach. So there's several, um, well, they're companies, but they're also former students here um, that I mentor around uh, what they do with the gospel, uh, where both of them have their own websites that they focus on and that they've monetized with. So, you know, obviously with the gospel, there is a fine line with um, sharing it, and it's okay to make money. Um, as long as you don't lose the sight of what your passion is there. What are some of your other Janets? JJ, what's that? Gardening. Gardening. Fantastic. Back there in the corner. You're just stretching? So tell us what your passion is while you're stretching. <laughs> Surf, okay. You're in the right school. Good job. Um, any others? Airplanes. Airplanes. Fantastic. Energy. What's that? Make energy. Make energy. Okay. Cooking. Cooking. Yeah. You can thank the internet for it. Is that is one of the easiest ways to make money with your love with the inter, uh, with cooking through the internet. All right, share with me your chads. What are some of the ways that are easiest for you to communicate? Social media, okay. Yeah, you guys for the most part have that down pretty well. Some of you are what they call digitally native. You were born, you, you don't know anything different than what we have with social media. What other ways? I'm thinking maybe like a podcast, because uh, I noticed like with journal writing, I'm terrible about writing, but I started doing an audio journal and it's like a thousand times easier for me. So uh, something with my voice is way better. Yeah, and I love podcasting. I, I, uh, a company pays me to do uh, podcasting for them for search engine marketing. And there are so many tools where you can, there are apps where you can use your phone to record and push it live to the internet. Any others? Any other ways that you enjoy communicating? So I'm gonna tell you just quickly, uh, with the internet, now keep in mind that 
I wear the glasses, my glasses, when I look through them, everything's digital. There are five love languages I like to call, or five ways to communicate on the internet. You guys hit uh, some of them. So the social media that's dealing with the written word, we talked about audio. Uh, so there's text, there's audio, there's video, uh, there's images, and I'm curious, even my class can even answer this. What's the fifth language? And it's without doubt the most overlooked. The fifth way to communicate online. Email, Email that would be part of text. Data, Data. Uh, that would still tie into it. The fifth one is software. Believe it or not, you, got, you guys will hear, particularly once you graduate, software as a service. There is such thing as software as content. The New York Times is amazing at using software as content. You can spot software as content when there really is, you're, you're playing with, like if you do the New York Times, one of the things is like, should I buy or should I rent? And you put in all these variables, they have this very complex widget, and you're like, oh, well, that's, that's really cool. I'm going to come back here. I'm going to bookmark this. But there really isn't a, you're not buying to use it. What they're doing is they are communicating through software to engage with you more. And so anyone here, com uh, computer science or IT? JJ, our loan uh, person. That uh, absolutely is one of uh, the ways you can communicate. So let me go to the third partner, and this partner is Jimmy. Jimmy, he's a childhood friend. He and I grew up together. He just lived around the corner. And what Jimmy represents, and what Jimmy, his skill, his gift, is he is able to market like nobody I've ever met. Like, you, he just is meticulous at building a community. You can have a passion, you can even have a voice, and not have a community and go nowhere with passionpreneurship. A community is what really helps give lift. In fact, there are millions of blogs where they have the passion, they have the voice, it's crickets on their blog. And when I was thinking on this, I wrote down passion without a community is ineffective. It, it is really is probably the biggest barrier of people succeeding at passionpreneurship. And so as you're thinking of, okay, I have a voice, I have a passion, now how am I going to find the people that have that same passion. Because that's what matters, guys. In fact, I go through, when I mentor uh, students and when I consult businesses, they come to me saying, hey, we have this widget, we have this product. And I'm like, great, do you have an audience? And they're like, no, we're gonna go build it first and then we're gonna go get the audience. And to me, that's building the plane backwards. You know, that's saying, okay, let's, build the plane as we're falling out of the sky and hopefully we'll get the engine before we hit the ground. Whereas if you can come with an audience, a community, and the final part, which is generally the very first thing that people focus on, and that is sustainability, this actually is a lot easier. But before I jump off of Jimmy, what I think is really important about community is finding where they're at and being a part of it. A lot of people are like, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm on social media, I talk to my friends, but they don't go and really dive in and let people see that passion. Learn how to market. I was talking to a, an entrepreneur yesterday and she's like, yeah, I need to hand off marketing to someone. I have an idea, I need to hand it off. My opinion is that every entrepreneur 
will only benefit who can pick one channel. When I mean a channel, I'm talking about search, I'm talking about social media, email marketing. Pick one and run with it, learn it, go deep with it. Go to sites like Udemy, Skillshare. Uh, there are so many places that you can learn online that blogs that will teach you on how to drive that traffic to build the community. I want to end with John. John and I, um, he's the one that I told him not to uh, do the business and then he went on to sell it and do well at it. John is amazing at making sure that what we're doing is sustainable. And what I have down for John is passion without sustainability or unsustainable passion is a fool's errand. There are so many, and particularly since I teach social entrepreneurship, where you're like, oh, I love this. I could do this without making money. Well, that's great, but that's a hobby. That's not how you feed your family. And so making money at your passion and figuring out how to make money at your passion is critical. And John, as a partner, you know, I've partnered with him on multiple things, and I've told him, I'm like, I don't care what we do, you know, as long as it meets this criteria, I want to be a partner with you because you will sit down and you will say, okay, we have this audience. Not only am I going to figure out what this audience likes, what this community wants. It's not what you want because you're not necessarily buying this product. You're selling it. You want to know what your community wants. And as you figure that out, they will take care of you for as long as you need because you're not a used car salesperson just trying to slip one into them. You're giving them something that they genuinely want. And the best thing that you can do on this one, this is really good, I can talk theory and we can philosophize about sustainability and the importance of making money at what you do, but the gift that I gave you at the beginning of this uh, presentation, that uh, slide share, that the, presentation, the PowerPoint, that's what I'm trying to think of. The PowerPoint that I gave you that's a hundred slides long focuses entirely on this. So this, as important as the money is, if you start here and you don't have any of these, in of itself it's not always the case, but the sustainability is harder. And then, how are we doing? Okay, I'm gonna wrap up with this. The one thing that all four of these partners, I love these guys as their family. We've gone through so much and uh, the valleys and the uh, peaks of entrepreneurship. What I love about each and every one of them is they are doers. They go and they say, I have passion and I'm gonna go out and do it. And without action, it's nothing. And I just saw Josh Dalton walk in. He's a teacher here. And he and I were talking about how people doing entrepreneurship, they'll see a pebble in the road signifying this problem with their idea, and they'll stop. They're like, oh, I can't move forward. My biggest struggle when I consult, particularly students, they get stuck on the logo. You know, they're like, oh, I've got to have this design. And I've worked with, I have one client who spent a year just on that and lost out on a lot of money because it was a pebble in the road. It wasn't the important part of the journey. So I wanna leave with that and leave a few moments for you to ask questions. I invite you guys, the lunch is afterwards, correct? Uh, to come and I, I would love to talk to you more about it. But guys, this formula, and you know, I was thinking, I originally was gonna do this and I had all these case studies but I just thought, you know, that's, that's great, but I want them to also have tools to help them out. So recognizing what your passion is and then taking that PowerPoint uh, presentation that I shared at the beginning will help you get past those pebbles, one, and to go on to truly live your passion. But I do want to conclude where I started at the beginning, and that's the importance that all of this means nothing if you don't include our Father in Heaven and His plan. I've, I have personally witnessed people uh, lose sight of eternity because of paper. That's all money is. 
It is paper. It is not what we can cling to for forever. And so I encourage you to focus on the center, the core, and that is the Savior Jesus Christ. I again testify to you that it is true. And I say that in Jesus' name. Amen. I open it up to you guys. We've got two minutes for questions. So this is where I was talking about at the beginning. Every entrepreneur has their own journey, their own path. My way and what I find more enjoyable is this. You can do it the other way. We have entrepreneurs in the center that do it that way, and they're phenomenally successful. But I have found, and when people come in to mentor, I'm like, go find your community first. Because you guys, no matter how brilliant you think your idea is, when you get other people who are passionate about it, they're only going to improve it. So for me to tell you that the way you're doing it is wrong or doing it simultaneously would negate everything that I just said. Um, but if you want to follow that equation, I would suggest figuring out the passion of it. If not, that's fine. You know, and I still help people who do it the other way around, but I always try to slip in the importance of an audience. Cool. I saw Dominique, I think you had your... Yes. If you were if I were to be 23 again, I uh, would definitely invest more in the companies that I worked with. Um, the companies that throughout my journey in life, they gave a lot, but there's so much more that all these companies uh, can give. But I would particularly, at 23, I was here. And I wish I had leveraged my college and my, my undergrad and my master's better. I know you guys are crazy busy, but there is so much. And if what you guys have now, I had back then, I would have taken Hawaii any day of the week over at Provo. Any other questions? I uh, take 283, because 283 focuses entirely on your interest and your passion. Uh, but the best thing that you can do is work on the voice. Because you go online, you tend to focus what your heart likes to do. So I would suggest with everyone to start a blog and start that journey. And you'll end up very different, in a very different place than where you would have thought you did. All right, guys, I know you have class. Thanks for your time.